This is Brighton's finest. Bringing the artists. Bringing the artists closer to you. Juice. I was wondering if um, if I could start off by asking you or either of you uh, about the name of the album. Yeah. Why? What it means and why? Why did you call it Relaxer? Well, it's um, it originally um, uh, came from a, um, a recording that Tom, our drummer, had had worked on, and he sent it to us. And the title of the recording was Relaxer. And then from that, we then started. It, it became part of um, uh, the De- Dead Crush lyrics, and Dead Crush is a track on a new f- album. Um, um, and then we we lost the lyrics for Dead Crush. Um, and by lost, I mean we lost those lyrics. We didn't lose them. We just decided to get rid of them. And um, we, but we always remembered relaxer, and we liked it. We thought it was a cool word, and we just thought that it fitted with the aesthetic. I think. Um, so it, beyond that, it's, it's not too deep a meaning. No. no. <laughs> and dead crush itself. What does that mean? <laughs> the dead crush is a sort of expression we made up to describe. Uh, Finding somebody, finding a photo of somebody who's really beautiful and you find them really intriguing, but they are unfortunately dead. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Having a crush on a dead person is uh, something, I don't know, is, is something slightly, slightly, ever so slightly wrong about that? <laughs> In a way, I would, it's not the dead body. It's yeah. more the person when they were yeah. alive. Yeah. Sure. yeah, I'm sure I've got a crush on Marilyn Monroe or something like that. Somewhere exactly. in, my, in, in the deep and recesses of my <laughs> psyche. Yeah. Um, so, and also, I was quite interested in why you did House of the Rising Sun, which, of course, is not just an animal song, but it's actually an old traditional folk yeah. song, isn't it? Mm. Exactly, yeah. We, 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 we like the idea of um, taking taking that song and kind of reimagining it. It's it, like you said. It's uh, it, its uh, origin is is unknown, and and um, like all good folk songs, they're they're passed down almost like Chinese whispers through each generation. And um, I think we wanted to have a we wanted to give it a go, see how it sounded. Yeah, and it and it, and it sounded good. It does. I mean, is it something <laughs> you you were brought up on that song? It was in different Part ways. Of your I childhood. Think. I grew up with it. It's a folk song that I heard my family singing. And Joe, you know, you grew up, I think, with the animals the version, animal didn't version. you? Yeah, yeah. So certainly a big part of both of our childhoods. Sure. I think anybody who plays guitar knows how to play that song as well, don't they? I think it's probably one of the first. The animal version is probably one of the first things I learned. It's yeah. um, it's basic. It's like it's got a basic chord structure and it's got a picking pattern that's quite, quite um, easy to pick up. So yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. And uh, hit me like a snare is kind of quite. Um, kind of raw isn't it quite um sort of minimalist in, in some ways yeah. um, mm. can you t- uh, can you tell me a bit, a bit about that one yeah it's got kind of a loose kind of like post-punk sort of sound it's not a p- typical alt j song in that respect usually our songs are very kind of intricate and crafted and this one really came about as a result of kind of a jam that we were just found ourselves doing in the studio uh luckily charlie our producer hit record as we were jamming and we pretty much used that initial demo to build the whole song um it was just a guitar riff joe had that he was messing around with and it quickly tom and i joined in with our own parts just spontaneously coming up with stuff and it was it just wrote itself really Mm. um it sort of reminds me of a song of your previous album and i'm just trying to remember the name of it now left Left hand Hand free yes left Mm. left hand free did you say quite a similar story that one was done as a jam wasn't it if i remember that's right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, it's, it's it, usually, as I say, we write songs in a much more kind of like intricate, kind of like painstakingly crafted, hand stitched, you know, way. But occasionally, I think you know, we just get grabbed by some sort of inspiration and go with it. Sure. Brighton's finest. Jeff Hemmings. Jeff Hemmings. This is Brighton's finest. Just on that note about how you actually make your music, um, apart from apart from the one you've just been talking about, generally speaking, how, how does it come about? Somebody come up with an idea, a riff, an yeah, idea. Yeah, it kind of it, it starts it starts kind of um, with me kind of isolated from everything really, and I have my guitar and um, I have um, the books that I've read, all all the things from books that I've read and films that I've watched and liked. I've recorded it in this notebook, so I have my notebook and I have my guitar, and I have an idea in my head, and um, I just spend X amount of days, weeks, hours just working on these 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 structures um and then i uh, by the time i've kind of finished i have an, a rough song that i take to the band and the band kind of sort of like react to it and that's that reaction that then you go through the second process of writing yeah 
um, and then we all kind of work work on the song together, and then we take it to our producer, and that's the final process. Okay, cool. Um, and um, this is obviously your third album, and you've come a long way, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think uh, you you sort of view it as um, actually it's taken a long time. It's obviously not an overnight thing, but. Uh, some people looking at your history might think, wow, they're, they're already playing Madison Square Garden and things like that. Um, do you remember, I mean, how was that particular show um, in in the States? Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, you know, we it's one of those venues that you grow up having heard of, you know, even if you don't live in America or in New York. So playing, you know, Madison Square Garden was, was awesome. I think we, we never expected to get that far. And it was a real a real night where we realized just, just how well things had gone and how lucky we were and how much we achieved. And um, do you remember the first ever time you went into a studio as a three-piece to um, to rehearse or to, to work on music together? Well, I mean, so we started the band actually when there were four of us um, in Leeds. And then so we so we had some, um, I think we had some studio time once uh, when we were students. A friend of ours who was studying music tech let us come into their their uni kind of like studio department and we tried to do a demo it didn't actually go very well but no. um we certainly got a bit of a bug for that atmosphere of um of, of studio recording definitely yeah. it was more to do with the gig though wasn't it in somebody's house wasn't it the first ever show you ever did yeah to, in front of people yeah we we i think we had realized that we'd been working um for the last couple of months on these songs that we were incredibly proud of and i think we we almost had to explain um, our absence over the last three months by putting on this gig to, to prove to people that we hadn't been um, we hadn't gone AWOL we were actually just in our rooms working very hard on, on, on writing these songs and we wanted to show people the songs so we um, we got together and decided that we should probably put a gig on in our front room because it was it was a good sized front room and um, lots of natural light lots of natural light and um we that's 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 what we did and yeah. we played to a lot of unsuspecting <laughs> friends <laughs> and the re reaction was positive enough for you to think we want to do that again exactly exactly <laughs> yeah. okay brilliant uh well thanks very much for take, taking the time cool. take care and cool. um, look forward to seeing you thanks in Brighton. Right, thanks for thank having you. us bye-bye right this is juice brighton's, brighton's finest. finest bringing the artists closer to you